Hi everyone, my name is Nicolas Stiller and I will be talking to you about BuildKit, which is an alternative way to build container images. I'm a DevOps engineer working for Haufe Group located in Freiburg, Germany, and I'm also a Docker captain and a Microsoft MVP. BuildKit was actually uh, initiated as part of the Mobi project, uh, which was created by Docker to separate the open source stack or the open source components in a Docker stack uh, from the uh, Docker enterprise stuff. And it's entirely community driven, although there are some um, Docker employees working on BuildKit, uh, it is not directly controlled by Docker. Uh, it brings a, a long list of very nice features to um, container image building, but um, those are not available in the legacy builder uh, in Docker, um, and they can be used directly with the Docker CLI, and they can be used uh, independently of Docker when using BuildKit directly. So for example, um, BuildKit brings multi-stage builds and enhances them with concurrent builds, meaning uh, stages can be executed in parallel. Um, builds can also be executed, distributed on different daemons. Um, it's possible to use a remote cache instead of just a local build cache. Uh, you can also protect secrets, so inject secrets into a build, which are only available during the build. And uh, one of the most important things nowadays, I think, is uh, the way the op option to execute it in an unprivileged container or in an unprivileged environment as a user without root privileges, um, which greatly reduces the attack surface. Let's take a quick look at how BuildKit adds concurrency to a multi-stage build. Uh, a quick recap, when looking at the Docker file on this slide, you'll notice that it has several sections, each beginning with a from keyword. That is a multi-stage build, meaning that it builds more or less from top to bottom, but um, the individual, individual from sections initiate a new section, a new set of commands that are run in the context of the specified container image. And it's then possible to copy files from a previous stage to the current one. So if you look at this Docker file, we have uh, stages build one, build two, and the stage called final. And the final stage actually copies uh, files from the stages build one and build two. So what BuildKit now does is it analyzes the Docker file and creates a dependency graph. And it will um, base this dependency graph on the copy commands. When looking at this, you'll realize that the final stage depends on build one and build two, but there's no dependency between build one and build two. So BuildKit will um, determine that the stages build one and build two can be run in parallel, while the final stage has to wait for build one and build two to finish before it can complete. Um, okay, next thing about BuildKit is, um, you probably know the, the build cache, so when running um, the same or very similar builds on the same daemon, it will reuse existing layers because um, you can consider an image to be a directed graph uh, from one layer using a command to the new layer. And if um, during a, an, an image build, the builder realizes that the source layer is the same and the command is the same, it can just reuse the existing layer. Now, BuildKit takes this to another level because it's able to use a build cache from a remote image, meaning that the image can live in, a, in an OCI registry somewhere on the net, on your network. And BuildKit will go out of the registry, download cache information from this image and then decide if it's necessary to download individual layers um, as part of the build process. <clears throat> so it's not necessary to download the whole image beforehand. BuildKit will just take care of uh, determining which parts of uh, such an image can be reused and uh, which need to be downloaded. The only prerequisite is that the cache information must be embedded during a build. Let's take a quick look at the commands. So when using a Docker CLI, um, you need to enable BuildKit as part of the Docker CLI by creating an environment variable. And you need to pass a build argument, which tells BuildKit to embed this build cache information into the image. And when you do a new build, 
let's say a consecutive build of this uh, of the same Docker file and the same sources, you tell it to go out to the registry and use the existing image located in this registry. And BuildKit will fetch the uh, cache information and decide which layers to download. Now, another important thing is if you need to rely on, on some kind of secret during a build, um, there are some ways how not to do it. So, for example, you should never ever use environment variables, especially not an, an env directive in the Docker file, because that env directive burns a variable into the image. So, later on, whenever you um, execute something in that image, for example, do an exec into the image, those variables will be available, meaning that you have um, automatically leaked the, the secret into the image and thereby um, yeah, lost control over your secret. One option is using build arguments, but BuildKit offers a different way, which provides a bit more, more control over the secret. Um, in fact, it is able to, so BuildKit is able to mount a file temporarily into the image build. The way this works is that the file is um, exposed to the to the build using uh, tempfs, and uh, the commands for this look like this. In your Docker file, you need to tell BuildKit that this Docker file relies on an experimental syntax, and then in a run command, you can specify a new parameter, which tells BuildKit that you want something mounted for this run directive. And in this, in this case, it's of type secret and uh, you need to specify an ID. And the ID where this secret comes from is uh, specified when um, running the build, for example, using Docker build. So you then specify the ID of a secret and the file where the secret comes from, and this is automatically mounted into slash run slash secrets. Um, with the file name um, equal to the ID that you chose in the command. Okay, um, you can use BuildKit in a, in a wide variety of ways. The way that I've shown you on the, on the slides is how to use BuildKit as part of the Docker CLI. So when you use uh, Docker and uh, create the environment variable docker underscore BuildKit and set this to one, you get BuildKit under the hood, but you still rely on Docker. If you don't want to rely on Docker, then there's different ways to do this. So you can run the daemon and the CLI yourself. Um, that means you need to run the daemon in the background. You need to run the CLI against the daemon and do the build. But there's also a way uh, which is called daemonless, which is actually just a small convenience script which wraps the daemon and the CLI. So when you run this daemonless script, it will start the daemon in the background and run the build against it. And as soon as the build is finished, it will then terminate the uh, daemon. So all of those ways that I just mentioned can be done locally, meaning on, let's say, on your local machine. You can also uh, run all of those three variants in a containerized way. So BuildKit offers uh, pre-created containers for, uh, for running daemon and CLI in a container, but all three variants can also be run in a rootless way. Mind the difference because the, the rootless support is non-experimental in BuildKit. So it's a full feature with full support, um, but running Docker in a rootless way is still experimental. The, um, well, it is expected to, to get out of experimental when the new, when the next release drops, but um, I don't have a date for this. But if you want to run BuildKit without Docker, without privilege, privileges, uh, you can do this for the manual way, running daemon and CLI, or you can do this with a daemonless script. And uh, for example, if you want to use the daemonless script, it is uh, as easy as calling this script, which is, for example, part of all the containers provided by BuildKit. Um, it's part of the repository for BuildKit, so it's easy to get your hands on. And what you need to specify is to um, you need to tell BuildKit which front end to use. The front end is um, the, the parser for the input file. 
and in this case uh, it's meant to use a docker file you need to tell it where the build context is which is often dot sometimes uh, somewhere else and you need you, you must tell buildkit where the docker file lives and if you do all of that um, it will start the daemon run the build against the daemon and then terminate the daemon again so what we've seen in this lightning talk is that buildkit brings uh, a list of new features to image building um, one of the highlights is um, the concurrent builds for multi-stage builds that um, stages can be run in parallel to speed up your build. We've seen that it's possible to mount secrets temporarily into a build. By the way, this is also able, this is also possible for the SSH agent socket. Um, you can forward this into a build. And we've seen that it's possible to do this with and without Docker. Um, thank you for listening. Um, I'm really looking forward to your questions and, um, well, hoping I can answer all of them. Uh, so I'll see you later. Bye, everyone.